What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons for Kivi and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at checkboxes. And in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons. And they are very, very similar. This is gonna be a very short video, but it's almost New Year's, so short videos are good. It's the holiday season. So I've got the same app we had yesterday in the last video, and here I've got radio buttons instead of checkboxes. And a radio button is round, a checkbox is square, right? And a checkbox allows you to make multiple selections. So if you watched the last video, if you didn't see it, check the link in the comment section below for the playlist. And you'll see that with checkboxes, you can click many. So in the last video, we checked all three of these at once and they each showed up. With radio buttons, it's very different. You're selecting just one item. And that's the point of a radio button, to select from a group one item, right? So you can see, definitionally, when we click the next one, the other one is unselected, right? So, and the same thing's happening. We're passing pepperoni in and it says you selected pepperoni or cheese or mushroom. So uh, let's head over here. I've got two files, radio.py and radio.kv. And this is the exact code that we had in the last video. Again, if you didn't see that video, I'll talk about the stuff from the last video a little bit in this video, but you really wanna go back and watch that other video to really learn how to use check boxes. They're pretty simple. So I'll mention a little bit how this works in the video, but I'm gonna assume you already watched that video. So we're also using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's head over to our radio.kv file and you can see we've got our box layout inside of here. We have a grid layout with two columns. So we have the, the topping and the button, right? So we have the label, this is the topping, and then the checkbox. Now this code is all the exact same from the last video. In fact, if we save this and run it right now, we see that in fact it is the exact as the last video. We can select all three of these. These are boxes, they're square, a little check mark goes into each one, and as we click on each one or unclick, it adds or removes to the list down here, and that's cool. So what's the difference between checkbox and radio button programmatically? Well, let's take a look at our code here, and it's incredibly simple. All we do is group them, right? So you take some checkboxes that you already have and then group them together. And that grouping tells Kivi, hey, select between these in the group, right? So we've got our checkbox here. We could just comment, uh, we could just tab over here, and we just type group, right? And now we just name this. We can name it anything we want. So I'm gonna call this pizza underscore toppings because that's what these are. So if we now copy this and come down to each checkbox that we wanna to add to this group, we just do that. So here's another one, group pizza toppings. And here's the third one, group pizza toppings. Make sure you tab in and all that good stuff. Everything else stays the same. So now if we go ahead and save this and run it, same exact file, same exact everything. We've just added a group. You'll notice now that the little boxes are round. They're not square anymore. And if we click one and click the next one, you can see it acts like a radio button is supposed to act. And it's only checking one. And that's it. So <laughs> super fast video today. I'll spend a couple minutes now just sort of looking at the code from the last video. Uh, we don't really need to go through this. This is just basic stuff. Uh, but here, if you didn't see the last video, what we did was whenever you click a checkbox over here, we have this on active and it calls root.checkbox underscore click. It passes self, it also passes self activity. It also passes a word, in this case cheese, because this is the cheese label. In this one, we pass in mushroom because this is the mushroom checkbox, right? So then when we come over to our Python code, inside of our main class here, we have defined this checkbox under, underscore click function. We pass self, we pass instance, which, which we mostly ignore. We pass value, which is coming back as true or false. And we pass a fourth one, I'm calling it topping, to pass that word, cheese, mushroom, whatever. And that will be assigned to this variable. Then inside of here, we can just say, if the value equals true, meaning if it was checked, then we want to append this to a list that I've created right here, a blank Python list. And this will keep track of all the things we, we clicked. Now, this is not super important in this instance because we're using radio buttons, but for the checkboxes, we wanted to make them into a list because we can check more than one checkbox. Strictly speaking, we probably don't need to do that here because this is just 
a radio button, but um, it's already there, so I'll just leave it. Then we create a blank variable, right? And then we take that variable and append each item in our list one at a time, right here. And then we finally just output that to the screen. You selected that variable, right? Which we self.ids.outputlabel.txt. That output label.txt is, let's see, this label here down at the bottom of our app, and it will just output it right there. So really, really simple. Again, I go through all this in much greater detail in that last video from two days ago. Check the playlist. It's an on checkboxes. If you really don't understand this and really want a more detailed thing, it's like a 20 minute video. You can watch that here. Like I said, I'm just going over this really quickly because you know this is really, really simple and really cool. So again, to use a radio button instead of a checkbox, you just create a regular checkbox and then just add a group. Now you wanna make sure these things are all the same because that's how they're identifying themselves to each other by this name, right? So if you call this one pizza toppings, and you call this one pizza topping for mushroom here, it just wouldn't work. We can save this and run it to see. Here we have this one, this one. And now we're getting a whole second one because this is a different group, right? And it's independent of these first two, right? Which is definitely not what we want. So make sure you name all these things the same. I'll change that back to toppings and it will now work. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership, so pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.